What's going on guys? Welcome back to Raider World. So in this episode on the El Dorado project, we have the 12 inch Folsom Prison Series bars from Tap Performance. Available in 12, 14, and 16 inch, these Folsom Prison Series bars feature a gloss black finish, widow's peak design, and are designed with a reduced width that provide less strain on your shoulders and back, while also making cornering and slow maneuvers less of a stretch. The interior has been smoothed out to lessen snags and damage, and these one and a half inch bars provide plenty of space for all those wires. For 2015 and up road glides and 2014 and up electro or street glides, you can reuse the stock cables. But wiring extensions will be needed for electro or street glide models. Now, if you're looking for exact measurements on each size of bars available, TAB has a full breakdown on each for either road glide or street glide. And to top it all off, 5% of profits will be donated to Wheels for Warriors USA, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping veterans two wheels at a time. So for this install, I will be using the NAMS Control Extensions Kit, the Fat Baggers 4-inch Clutch Cable Extension, and I'll also be replacing the OEM Harley Plastic Adjuster with the Easy Clutch Adjuster Upgrade Kit from Fat Baggers. Tab Performance also offers the Fat Baggers Easy Install Handlebar Kits and NAMS Control Extensions on their website. Now I'll also be installing new grips and riser bushings. I chose to go with the Biltwell Alumicore Throttle by Wire Grips because that's what I have on the Road Glide and I absolutely love them. And I did choose to go with the polyurethane riser bushings from Harley Davidson. There are plenty of brands out there that'll also do the trick, but I chose to go with these. So why am I changing the bushings? The stock OEM rubber bushings wear out faster and easier. So upgrading to these polyurethane riser bushings gets rid of that sloppy feel you get over time. They provide better control and vibration absorption. All right guys, so that's enough of the intro. This is gonna be a fun project, so let's get it installed on the bike. So to get this project started, I'm gonna remove the seat, the left saddlebag, and the left side cover. I'm gonna disconnect the main fuse because I am gonna remove the fuel tank. So I'll start off by disconnecting the fuel line I'll pull up on this collar or this fitting and it'll pop right out. Just have a rag ready to catch any gas that comes out. So I'll disconnect the gray connector that leads to the tank and I'll also disconnect the vent hose. So for the tank, you have two screws in the back and two screws in the front. And for these, I'm using a half inch socket. Now I'm only removing the tank because I'm installing the new riser bushings and because I'm doing a color swap on the inner fairing and dash panel. And because I have the stretch tank from Hogworks, this will make it a lot easier to remove the dash panel. Now with a regular tank, you can simply just turn your handlebars and pull it out, or you can disconnect the two accessory connectors on the back and you can pull the panel back just far enough to access the bar clamp screws. Now before I start removing the outer fairing, I'm gonna cover up the front fender. Now I'll start removing the outer fairing you have three screws that hold on to the windshield trim and windshield. You have two short outer screws and one long inner screw. Now I'll lightly pull back on the outer fairing and pull out the windshield. So I'll reinstall the center windshield screw to support the outer fairing while I'm removing the other screws. Now I'll move the two torque screws on the right and left side. You have a longer screw on the top, shorter screw on the bottom. And same thing, these are a T27. Now I'll take out the center windshield screw, I'll remove the outer fairing, and disconnect the headlight. Now I'll remove the right and left turn signals. Now I do have the Hogworks LED turn signals, but it's gonna be the exact same thing if you have the stock turn signals. You have two screws on each one, and they're 316s hex bit. Now I'll remove the dash panel. You have a screw on each side and it's a 530 seconds hex bit. Now, if you don't plan on removing your dash panel or changing out the inner fairing, you don't have to worry about doing any of the next steps. 
Now you can pull back this dash panel here and it'll give you access to the bar clamp screws. Once you tilt the fairing forward, you'll have access to that clamp, but I am gonna be changing all this out. So I'll go ahead and pull this dash panel off. There's two connectors on the back. Now obviously there's nothing here, but you still have connectors on the back. Now for the left side connector, the release tab is on the top. And for the right side connector, the release tab is on the bottom. So I am doing a color swap on the dash panel and the inner fairing, but that'll be in a later video. Now, after you remove the turn signals, you can remove this lower fairing skirt. So if you're not removing your fairing like I am, all you have to do is just disconnect your handlebar switch harness. You have your right one here, and then you have your run stop switch, and then you have your left side handlebar switch harness located here, and then you have your twist grip sensor that's held on by this Christmas tree. You just pop that out and disconnect it. Then all you have to do is just route them back towards your handlebars, and that's pretty much it. Now, because I am removing the fairing, I do have to disconnect a lot of these connectors. What I wanna do is disconnect any connectors that are leading towards the neck. They're gonna snag if I go to pull the fairing off. Now, most of these connectors, if not all, have a designated spot, so it's kinda of hard to get them mixed up. But if you wanna take a picture or a video, you can do that. But all I wanna do is just disconnect everything that's leading towards the neck, and then when I go to pull this off, nothing should snag. I'll start off by disconnecting the right side handlebar switch harness then the run stop switch. I'll disconnect the left side handlebar switch harness. I'll pop out the twist grip sensor, just held on by this Christmas tree. Just push down on this tab. It's easier if you just use a screwdriver. Push down on that and it pops out. As you can see, this cable runs up from the right side. So anything that I disconnect here is gonna stay to the right. And then you have your left cables here. They're gonna stay to the left. A lot of these are held on by Christmas tree retention clips. So just pop these out, follow them down, and then disconnect them. This is just a headlight connector. This will stay attached to the fairing. So I'll disconnect the radio connector you have this tab located right here. Just push down on that, and then you just swing this lock open and pull it out. So here you have your USB cable that leads to your small glove box. You don't need to disconnect that. Now you do need to disconnect the radio antenna. There's a tab right here on the bottom. Just push up on that, and it'll release it. Here's that tab on the radio antenna. You just push up on that so you can disconnect it. Here you have your GPS antenna. You don't need to disconnect that. I'll remove the right and left main to fairing harness. So I'll just look over one more time, make sure everything is disconnected, anything that's leading down towards the neck area here. And what I'll do is just tuck these wires back so nothing gets snagged, pulled, or damaged. Now I'll slowly pull back on the fairing to take it off making sure nothing is getting snagged. Now that I have the fairing removed, I'm gonna cut all the zip ties that are securing the front brake master cylinder cable, the clutch assembly cable, as well as the left and the right switch housing wires. Here you have your clutch line guide. Just cut the zip tie, this pops right out. This little nipple just goes inside of here so it stays attached to your handlebar. Here you have your twist grip sensor connector, and here you have a connector if you want to install heated grips. This is just for the power. Now this wire is long enough for the 12 inch, so you don't need any extensions. And right here on top of the top triple tree, I'll go ahead and cut these zip ties. Now to gain better access to the riser screws on the bottom when I turn the handlebars, I'm gonna get these wires out of the way. So I'll disconnect the ignition switch connector and I'll also get this right side accessory dash panel connector out of the way. You have two tabs on each side. Just pry those out and pull down and that's it. And on the left side, I'll get this clutch cable guide out of the way. I'll just pop this out. And then here you have your left side dash panel accessory connector. I'll get that out of the way. Getting all this stuff out of the way just gives you better access when you turn the handlebars to access those screws on the bottom. 
because there is a plate right here that's in the way. So I do have to lift the bike some to turn the handlebars to access these screws. Now, because I am on a lift, I do have to use a center stand or a scissor lift on the front to raise the front of the bike up so I can turn the handlebars. Now, if you're using this method, you just wanna make sure that you're in gear and your bike is strapped down. Now, I'm also using wheel chocks on the back just in case. So what I'm doing now is just turning the handlebars to break loose the riser bushing screws. And to break these loose, I'm using a three quarter inch socket with an extension. Now I'm not gonna take them out all the way. I'm just gonna loosen them up. Once I get the bars off, I'll get them out the rest of the way. Now I'll remove the front brake master cylinder. You have two screws and they're a T25. Here I just have a bag ready so I can put it inside of here and then hang it. Now, when removing your controls, you can do this a couple of ways. You can do it while it's still mounted to the bike, or you can do it on the table. But since this already acts as a clamp while it's mounted on the bike, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it now. You already have your wire here, so you don't have to run this through the bar, but you do have your twist grip sensor that runs through the bar. I'll take off the grip and then guide that wire through. And to remove the switch housing, you have two screws on the back and they're a T25. So these two screws are retained in the housing so they won't come out. Now when you take the front off, your grip is gonna slide out so make sure you got a hold of that. Now for the right hand control module or your right hand switches, you have this latch, you're just gonna pry up on that and it'll pop right off. So here you have your twist grip sensor. You have all these teeth that line up with the same teeth on the grip. So when you twist the grip, this twists this, and it also activates your twist grip sensor. Now I'm gonna carefully and slowly pull and push and route this wire out. So now I'm gonna remove this trigger finger switch cap. You just wanna lift up, you hear a little pop, and then you just wanna pull it out in this direction. You don't wanna pull it up, you wanna pull it out sideways. Now I'm gonna remove the switch housing. You have two screws and they're a T25. Now I'm gonna remove the clutch assembly. Same thing, you have two screws and they're a T25. Same thing with this one. I'll put it inside of a bag so nothing gets damaged. Now, same thing with this one. Just pry up on this latch and it'll pop right off. Now, you always wanna be careful with these ribbons. You don't wanna damage them or break them. So when routing this wire, you have these fingers that this cable sits in. You disconnect it here and it'll free up your wire. So I'm not worried about getting his left side grip off because I'm not reusing it or the bars. So I'm just gonna leave this on here. But if you are reusing your grips, a lot of times these are glued on. So you have to work it pretty good to get them off. Now with this one, it's glued on there pretty good. I'd have to work it off. And a lot of times these get damaged and you're gonna have to buy new grips anyway. Now I'll remove this top clamp to release the bars. You have four screws and they're a quarter inch hex bit. Here, I'm just using a bungee. So when I'm loosening up the screws, I can just rest the bar on the frame. So now to remove the bushings, I'm gonna reinstall the top clamp so these bottom clamps don't spin when I'm removing the screws. So now I'll remove this ground to the bottom clamp so it doesn't get damaged. And for this screw, it's a 516 socket. And I'll just thread the screw back into here so I don't lose it. Now I'll go ahead and remove both bottom screws. So here you have your screw with your bottom cup washer. Then you have your two top cup washers 
just take those off. And then you have these spacers that sit in the middle and then you have these rubber bushings. These are the rubber bushings that wear out over time. So that's why we're switching these out to the polyurethane bushings. Uh, it's gonna work and last a lot longer. So you can take out the rubber bushings from the bottom the same way you took out the top and that spacer will come out or you can just use a rubber mallet and knock it down and they'll both come out from the bottom. So inside of here, they just sit just like this. This is your bottom piece with your spacer and then here's your top bushing and it sits in there just like this. So in the kit for the new Harley-Davidson polyurethane riser bushings, you're gonna get four new bushings and two new mounting screws. So the part number for these bushings is 56298 and it fits 83 and later touring models except for trikes. So each side is gonna take two bushings and then obviously your mounting screw. So I'm gonna come in from the bottom with this one and this one go on the top. Now they are gonna be a little difficult to get in there. You can use some spit or maybe some assembly lube to slide it up in there. I'll just turn my front end to the left. I'll engage my fork lock so it locks it into place. So what I'll do to get this bottom bushing to set in is I'll take the clamp and I'll get this screw started onto the clamp to help guide this bushing in. All right, so I have the left and the right lower bushings installed. These are a little tough to get in there. I did use some assembly lube uh, just so it slides in a little easier. And then also I used a screwdriver on the edges just lightly to get it in there, get it started. And then I used the old screw from the older bushings to screw it onto the clamp to help guide it all the way through. Now I'll go ahead and get the top bushings on. Same thing, I'm gonna use some assembly lube to get it started and then work it on. And as you can see, the top ones go on a little easier. You also have a better angle coming from the top than the bottom. And here, I'll just take a rubber mallet and tap them into place. Now I'll get the bar clamp reinstalled. Make sure your ground wire is out of the way. And I am using the screws that came in the kit and they already have thread locker on them. Now just remember that clockwise is to loosen it up and counterclockwise is to tighten it down. Now the torque value for these bolts, it's calling for 30 to 40 foot pounds. Now I'll go ahead and reinstall my ground. Same thing, 516 socket to tighten it down and I'll just get it down nice and snug. So you wanna make sure you write your wires the exact same way I'll go ahead and reinstall the ignition switch connector. Just push it in until it clicks in and you see that it locks in. Here you have your accessory panel connector for the right side and your accessory panel connector for the left side. All right guys, so we have the new tab bars on the table. Obviously you wanna have a cloth or something to protect your bars when you're moving it around, uh, trying to get the wires through. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of videos on how to wire bars, especially if you're looking at getting new bars or you've already received your bars and you're looking for tips and tricks as far as getting your bars wired. Now, I did do a video on the Rogue Glide where I installed the Folsom Prison Series bars and these wires went in pretty smooth. Tap Performance did a great job as far as smoothing everything out, especially up here at the Widow's Peak and now they do add a braided sleeve that protects your connectors and your wires when you're guiding them through. Other than that, on the table, we have the twist grip sensor, we have the right hand control module, we have the right switch housing, our new Illumicore throttle grip, we have our left grip, we have the left hand control module, the switch housing, you wanna keep track of your trigger finger switch cap, and then obviously we have our NAMS extension kit. I'll show you how this works. 
But other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. Let's get this all wired up. So I'm gonna start with the right side because more often than not, that takes the longest because you have your twist grip sensor and then you also have your right hand control module wiring that you have to run through. On this one, you have two connectors because you do have your harness and your run stop switch. You always wanna be careful with your wiring when you're pulling everything off and you also wanna be careful with this ribbon. You don't wanna damage this. So I'll take the wire and guide it out of this channel. You have these two fingers that it sits on. I'll pull that out. I'll take a picking tool and press down on the tabs and disconnect them. All right, so now I'm gonna run the braided sleeve through the bar. Uh, I have a nut with a string to help it guide it through. So I'm gonna go ahead and guide this braided sleeve through the bar so I can get the wiring and everything attached to the end of here. Now, if you're wondering what this clamp is for, I use it to clamp down on the bars just to keep them in place while I'm running the wires through. Just helps it from moving it around and helps me guide the wires through. So instead of using electrical tape, because sometimes that can make a mess, I'm using this self-sealing silicone tape. Now obviously you want your control module connectors, these white connectors, towards the grip. So these will go down. I'll start off by offsetting it here. Just seeing where it's gonna come out at. So I'll offset it here. On this end, I'll run my twist grip sensor through the braided sleeve along with the harness. So for these connectors, you don't want them right on top of each other. So I kind of bend this one down and I'll just take some tape and tape that down. You don't want them right on top of each other because then it just makes it really fat. So just take this connector and face it downward, take some tape, tape it down. That way it's a little skinnier going through. I'll also take some tape and wrap it right here just to make this a little smaller. So I just flip the bars over because it's going to be a little easier to uh, route it this way. So you probably heard this before, I'm doing a push-pull method to guide this wire through. So this twist grip sensor does have a certain slot it sits in. You'll see exactly where it goes and it'll sit right in the place. All right, so I have all the wiring ran through. Now you just wanna make sure you're taking your time on this. You're not pulling on these connectors and then possibly ripping them off. Uh, you just wanna make sure you get everything lined up. You want enough slack here and enough slack down here so you can connect to the control module and you can connect to your extensions and you wanna make sure that your twist grip sensor is seated properly. So we have the twist grip sensor down here and then we have our extensions. I'll connect these later. And then obviously I wanna make sure that this will connect here and seat properly. So now I'll go ahead and do the left side. So here you have your left hand control module. Same thing, take this wiring out of the channel and then disconnect it right up here. Press down on that tab with a picking tool to get it out. All right, so same thing. I'll take my nut with my string and braid a sleeve and guide it through. Now, same thing, just make sure that your white connector that goes to the control module is going up towards the grip. Now, when you're putting this connector into your braided sleeve, you only need to go so far. That way you're not having to drag your whole cable through to get it off. All right, we have that ran through, pretty easy. Go ahead and take this tape off. All right, so we're done with that. Now I'll reconnect the left-hand control module. Just make sure this is opened up. Just be careful with this ribbon. I'll put it around the bars, but first you wanna make sure that this wiring is through this channel on the finger and then connected to the connector.
Make sure you hear that click. So here we have the Biltwell Illumicore grip. They do have these grips in different colors. You can check it out on the website. Here I have a 316 hex bit. Just to loosen this up, I'll show you what's on the inside. Here you have what's on the inside of the grip. You have these two nuts. Basically this one nut is gonna be sitting here. You have about one thread showing. And then you have this nut. So when you tighten it down with your hex bit or whatever tool you're using, this tightens up so it provides a grip. So to get the grip on, you have this part of the grip that sits inside of this slot. And as far as the switch housing, it'll lock it into place and then you'll lock the end to secure it down. So here it reads Bitwell on the top and Illumicore on the bottom. And now I'll just take the housing and clamp it over the grip and over the control module. Just manipulate your grip so it sets into place. So once you have it fully seated, just make sure the wires aren't being pinched and then just close your latch. And obviously I'll get this all adjusted once we get it on the bike. You wanna snug these screws down nice and even. I won't tighten them down all the way. We still have to get it on the bike and adjust it from there. I'll go ahead and reinstall the trigger finger switch cap. Same thing, just come in from the outside and then just work it on. Now I'll reconnect the right hand control module. You have your switch harness and then you have your run stop switch. I'll connect them, run it through the finger, then through the channel and then swing this on and then clamp it down. So as you can see, some of this sleeve did get pulled back. So I'm gonna take some of that self sealing tape and I'm gonna wrap it around here just to clean this up. I'll reconnect my run stop switch. I'll reconnect my switch harness. And then I just give them a slight tug to make sure they're connected and fully seated. I'll run it through the finger and then through the channel and then snap it on. So like I said before, your twist grip sensor has these teeth and then on your grip, on the inside, you have teeth as well that line up with these teeth here. So you'll know if you have it lined up correctly, if this grips and you're able to pull the throttle. Just make sure this is seated correctly all the way. You have these grooves that it sits in and then you take your grip, slide that on, and you just twist it until it goes down all the way. And as you can see, you pull your throttle and it comes back. Now, same thing with the switch housing. In order to lock this grip into place, you wanna make sure you have this set inside this groove on the grip. When you put it on, you push down on your grip and it should seat in place and lock your grip down. And same thing with this side, you want this to sit right inside of this groove on the grip. And just make sure you tighten down these screws evenly so everything is seated correctly. Now I won't tighten them down all the way because we still have to adjust them once we get it on the bike. All right, so here I have the NAMS extension kit. Here I have the right side with the switch harness and run stop switch. And then this is the left side. So these only go in one way. I'll connect my run stop switch. You'll hear a click and just give it a slight tug to make sure it's secure. I'll install my switch harness connector. You'll hear a click. 
and these are connected. Now I am gonna take some tape and tape these up just to make sure they stay secure and protected. I'll go ahead and connect the left switch harness. You'll hear a click and now it's secured. And like I said, I'm gonna tape all these up just to make sure they stay connected and they stay protected. Now that I have the grips and the controls put on the bars, I'll go ahead and reinstall the bars so I can get everything else back on. So I'm not worried about the bar adjustment right now. I'll adjust it later. I'm just trying to get everything else put back on the bike. So when I tighten down this clamp, I like to tighten them down evenly and then I'll torque them down in a cross pattern. Now I'll reinstall the front brake master cylinder. You want to make sure your run stop switch is seated properly on the housing. So I won't tighten these down all the way just yet. I'll just get them secured to the bar. Once I sit on the bike, I'll be able to adjust the bars and adjust my controls and levers, and then I'll tighten everything down. And same thing with the clutch side, make sure everything is seated properly and pushed in all the way. Just make sure you're snugging all of these down evenly so it sits properly. So here you have your clutch guide that sat on the old bars. I usually just cut these off. It's on you what you wanna do with it, but I usually just cut these off. So as you can see, this brake line is sticking forward some. So all I'm gonna do is crack this banjo bolt so I can turn this brake line back and then tighten it back down. I'm not gonna loosen it up all the way because I don't wanna introduce any air into the line and then have to bleed the front brakes. So I just cracked it just enough where I can turn this brake line back to get it aligned with the bars. Now the torque value for this front master cylinder banjo bolt is 17 to 19 foot pounds. All right, so here we have the fat baggers four inch extension for the clutch line. And then I did purchase the easy clutch adjuster upgrade kit. Now you don't need this. This is just something that I want to do so I can easily adjust my clutch line. This is the four inch. You do need the four inch for your 12 inch bars. And anytime you go up, you will have to buy the longer versions. So you can check out the tab performance website and they do offer kits if you're going up in bars. And if you had any questions, fat baggers also provide some instructions. You just scan the QR code for whatever part you are getting and either a video or instructions is going to pop up on how to do it. So that's pretty good on them. Other than that, guys, let's get these installed. Now I don't have to take the chin spoiler off. I just have to take the nut off on the back so I can get it forward enough to access the clips that are securing down the clutch line. That way I can add the clutch line extension. Now that this is free, I'll go ahead and slide the adjuster tube up. That way we have access to the adjuster and we get all this disconnected. Then from here, you have these two red tabs. You just wanna push these out. You can use a screwdriver, but you can do it with your fingers. You'll collapse the adjuster. You'll rotate this yellow tube to where you can see the coupler or the ball. You just push up on this tab to release it. Here I'm just using a picking tool to pick this out. You can push from the back, but my chin spoiler is in the way. Now it's released. So now you can just separate it. Here you have that tab that I bent up in order to release that ball. And then once we put it back on, we would just bend this tab back down to secure over that ball end. So I'll be getting rid of all this and this spring because I am upgrading to the easy clutch adjuster. Now, if you're not upgrading to the easy clutch adjuster, I'll show you what to do as far as installing it with just the four inch extension. So you just wanna remove this yellow tube on the bottom. You have these tabs, one here and one here. You just spread it out and it'll pop off. So now you would just take your four inch extension. You have this bottom piece here that's gonna go on first. It'll sit on the clutch cable just like that. Then you just take your four inch extension, you'll loosen it up. You'll see inside of here that it threads out. Just thread it out far enough where you can slip your ball in. And then once you get it in, just tighten it down. So to tighten this up, 
the bottom is a 3 8 and the top is a 7 16 and you want to snug that nut down you don't want to over tighten just get it down nice and snug so now this ball is secured inside of here we threaded this top part down until that ball is nice and snug then we tighten down our nut so it doesn't go anywhere so now you just take your extension tube you'll slide that over you'll slide your clutch cable up and you just want to slide this down inside the tube where you can see it just push down on your clutch adjuster get everything lined up and here I'll just take a picking tool to pull it out some so it can pop in its location and there you go I'll push back down on the securing tab so it locks it into place so once you have your tab bent over and set in place, you can push down on your clutch adjuster, push down on this red tab to lock it into place. And then obviously you wanna check your clutch to make sure it's set properly to however you want it. And then just slide over the stock tube. And that's pretty much it. And then obviously you throw your clips back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this all apart again so I can add the easy clutch adjuster. Now I wanna get rid of this stock plastic adjuster along with the spring. So I'm just gonna use some cutters to cut it off. And from here, you can just twist this spring around to get it off. So first, I'm gonna remove the O-ring from the adjuster. And then I'll align the slots on the two parts of the adjuster. And then I'll slide the wire into the slot. Now I'll reinstall the O-ring from the bottom. Now I can go ahead and reinstall my tube and get these all connected like I did before. And then I can adjust my clutch right here. So I have everything set up here. So all I wanna do is line these pieces up And then I want to get that ball back into its groove. Now I just want to make sure that I push down on that tab so it locks it into place. Now it does take some playing around to get this to all line up and get that ball to go in there, but no big deal. Just make sure you push down on that tab so it locks that ball into place. So I'll check my clutch and check my adjustments. It's on you how much play you want. Some people like less play than others. I won't cover that in this video. I'll cover it in a later video. And to tighten down the clutch adjuster, you'll use two 5 eighths. We're gonna go ahead and reroute this brake line as far as the connections here. So you have your cluster right here of cables and wires. It's held on by this retaining clip. We're gonna pop this retaining clip out. Pop it out, pop our brake line out. It's currently on the top spot here. And then that way it's free and you're gonna have a lot more line to play with. So before I remount the fairing, I'm gonna throw some zip ties on the clutch line and the brake line just to get them out of the way so I can remount the fairing. And before you remount your fairing, just make sure you have all your wires out of the way. So just carefully line it up so you don't scratch it up.
Now from here, I'll reconnect all the connectors. Here you have your twist grip sensor. I'll plug this one in. I'll reconnect the radio. Make sure your lock is disengaged. Make sure you have it all lined up with the lock. Make sure it clicks into place. All these connectors had Christmas tree retention posts. Here I have the AM FM connector. Make sure that this retention clip is on the bottom. I'll connect the main to fairing harness. Here you have the left handlebar switch harness. It's all by its lonesome. So it'll go here off to the left side or to the right side as you're looking at it. It only goes in one way. Make sure you hear a click. Here you have your right handlebar switch harness with the run stop switch. These are together so you can't really mix these up. Just give it a slight tug to make sure it's secure. Now from here, I'm gonna check the brake line and the clutch line clearance, making sure nothing is pulling or tugging that I can turn all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Nothing's rubbing against the forks and nothing's rubbing against the frame. Now, before I remount the outer fairing, I'm gonna clean all these wires up, tuck everything in. I'm gonna reinstall the dash panel. Just remember that your left connector, the release tab is on the top and the right connector, the release tab is on the bottom. Then I'll reinstall the tank. You have your two screws in the front and your two screws in the rear. And the torque value on these is 15 to 20 foot pounds. I'll reconnect the vent line. I'll reconnect the fuel tank connector. So I'll reconnect the fuel line, just push up on this collar and it'll pop right in. Now, because I had the chin spoiler, reinstalling that clutch adjuster clip that went on the frame and then clipped onto this, it's not gonna work. So I'm just gonna use a zip tie and zip tie to the frame. And if I ever need to adjust my clutch, I can just cut that zip tie. And then I'll reinstall the seat. That way I can get my handlebars, my controls, my switches where they need to be. And then I'll torque them down. Now, because I am on a lift, I did use a scissor jack to raise the bike up so I can make sure I had clearance with the bars turning left and turning right, making sure they didn't make contact with the tank. Now the clearance is good with the inner fairing. Now I just wanna make sure that my throttle is good. It's not sticking. My controls are where they need to be. Now, because I've done this a few times, I kinda of already know where to put my switches and my levers when I install these bars. So everything is set, but I will leave them loose just in case one gets snagged or something gets pulled and it throws it out of whack. And then I just bring my ratchet up here and tighten them down. So all we need to do now is just tilt this fairing forward so I can access the clamp screws and get those tightened down and then also zip tie my brake line and my clutch line to the bar. And that pretty much wraps it up and then I'll throw on the outer fairing. So the torque value for the left and right switch housing screws is 35 to 44 inch pounds. Now the torque value for both the front master cylinder and the clutch hand lever clamp screws is 60 to 80 inch pounds. Now I'm gonna tilt the fairing forward so I can access the clamp screws and tighten those down. I'll go ahead and put back on my tank cover. Now one thing you also wanna make sure is that your bars are centered. You don't want more on the right than the left. So you wanna make sure that it's centered on the clamp. Now the torque value for the handlebar upper clamp screws is 16 to 20 foot pounds. Now I'll go ahead and zip tie my brake line and my clutch line. I 
All right, so now I'm just gonna straddle the front tire and work this fairing back on. Folsom Prison Series Bars from Tab Performance. I almost fell in my chair. Can't be falling in my chair. I got crap everywhere. I already feel like I'm riding. riding. Who knows? We'll see. Hopefully this shirt don't make too much noise. It makes a lot of noise, but I'm talking about audio wise. It's gonna feel good. So in this episode on the El Dorado Project, we have the Tab Performance some series <laughs> so now I'll remove this finger trigger finger trigger finger trigger switch cap so now I'm gonna remove <laughs> what are you doing man what's going on here tangling up on me trying to get this done where what is happening here there it is it's like getting your fishing line tangled up and you also want to look at your brake line and your clutch line making sure nothing's rubbing or tugging <laughs> Make sure nothing's rubbing or tugging. This shirt feels good and it's awesome. It's got palm trees. Hello, I live in Florida. And it's got skulls for coconuts. You got Harleys, you got Indians. You got the zombie symbol on here, tap performance. I mean, come on. <laughs>